first. So let's make a start, shall you we? Do that and I'll go find <coughs> this is Steve's heading because he's been fairly creative for the Windows well, side. I can't remember. Got a mastering Mac just to keep you happy. Walk around Windows, move around to Mac. So here we go. Let's do some of that. Um, I thought we'd start off with some <coughs> similarities because some of you might be spooked about using Macs for the first time. And I just want to tell you that it's about the same as changing from a Camry to a Commodore. And most of us can manage those kinds of things. Of course, some things in those cars have different names and they're in different places, but basically they'll do the same thing. And it's exactly the same these days as an image, uh, as a metaphor, if you like, for Macs and PCs. The big difference is this. PCs are really designed for managing data. So in particular, an application that I'm sure you've used called Excel is probably the best spreadsheet around. There's an Apple version, but it's not as good. However, what Macs do best, what Apple computers do best, is media. Their best, doesn't matter whether it's in a school or in the business world, for creating content. And that's the reason why uh, we're using Macs. Well, half the reason. The other half is that uh, Macs will do both platforms. They're dual platform. So that's a little bit of context. Um, what do we mean by creating content? Well, it means now that in your classes, you can set a test assessment tasks that include making a movie, recording a podcast, designing a comic, compiling a presentation and setting up a website. You don't have to tell students that they must do that. You can say, along with whatever format you have for your current assessment tasks, you can say to students, you might like to consider these other options. And it's up to the students to choose a media format that's appropriate, both for the learning tasks that you've set and for their preferences. For example, there are some students who don't like podcasts because they don't like hearing their voice. Instead, they probably like drawing and doing stuff like that, in which case designing a comic is a better option for them. So that's what we mean by creating content. Um, I think we need to address pretty early on what it's going to be like regarding coping in class. So we have to do our best as teachers to have a focus on teaching and learning and not on the computers. So you don't have to feel under an obligation that just because there are students in your class with computers, they should be using them all the time. Uh, one school we visited earlier this year has the 50% rule, and that says you use them for half the day and the other half they go off to be charged and you do other stuff. You have to work out your own destiny on that, but please don't feel obliged that just because they've got laptops they have to be used all the time because that's not the real world experience. It's not our experience either as teachers. Content is still more important than the technology. And we might do some uh, gee whiz stuff in a few minutes that is excellent in terms of technology, but unless we have good content, then people aren't going to watch and students aren't going to benefit in terms of their learning. The 10 minute rule is really down to Charlie Moyle. And it's part of his learning experience which says if you're doing stuff on computers, and it doesn't really matter whether it's a one-to-one -one program or you're down in the lab, if there are problems and they don't get solved inside of 10 minutes, it's plan B. You forget about the technology and you do something else, or you do the task another way. And it's his way, which I think is worth sharing with all of us, to cope with the stress of, oh, well, will we ever get a log on? Will we ever get that password right? After 10 minutes, you say, another day. And the last dot point is looking at things as positively as possible. Just believe that what you want to do will work. Maybe you tried it last night and it worked then, but today it won't. And that's an experience that I have from time to time, like the stuff I'm doing with 806 at the moment. It works at home and I come and do it here and for some reason or other it won't work straight away. So sometimes we can feel under a lot of pressure. So my way of managing that stress is to say it will work. It's just something I haven't done or something that's changed or something. But do your best to be positive about it. And here's a by the way. It's very important to do this and it's quite trivial but it can have huge consequences if you get it wrong. 
you should always connect this cable to the computer first. Always do that. And then to the PowerPoint. Because 999 times out of a thousand, it won't matter which way you do it. But I had an experience a year or two ago in a classroom here where we were running off an extension cord and I connected there. And when I brought this over here to put it into the computer, I got an arc and it cooked the logic board. And that's a thousand dollars. So, and I'd heard somebody years before tell us that and I thought, oh yeah, I do this heaps of time. I just plug it in over there and plug it here. But when I had that lesson, I now make a feature of saying to people, please do it this way. And one of the best learners for this has been Carol because she saw it happen. Okay, I thought now we'd deal with where you're up to, what kinds of questions you've got. I can do a tour of the Mac side, but I think we might be better off finding out whether you've got key questions, stuff you've heard about or fears you have. So I need to press escape because we're in present mode here, but if I now click here I can type in your questions. I don't know where to start. I've never used them. Uh, maybe, uh, so it's no good asking you to ask your questions. I wouldn't have a clue where I'm starting. All right. 